do whatever you need to. But I shan't be paying my respects to any of the gods on show. Mistress Lightness. You never felt the call of the divine, Astarian. Oh, I tried them all. There she stands, just as Elminster promised. Mistra, goddess of the weave, mother of all magic. The old man wasn't lying. She's opened the summoning channel. Can't you feel it? Gail's right. The very air around the statue crackles with magic, as though the weave itself were coursing beneath her stony skin. A stream of pure, undiluted weave. I only have to reach out, and it will carry me to Mistra, wherever she may be. Well, go on then. It's rude to keep a goddess waiting. Time was, I'd have given my right arm for a chance to speak with Mistra again. <laughs> the left one, too. Maybe a knee. Hmm. Not the message one hopes to receive from a past lover. But her first love was always the weave. At best, I was a close second. When I pictured this moment, I thought I'd feel more in control. Yet, yeah, here I am, with palms sweatier than a bugbear's armpit. I always wonder what being nervous would feel like. I hate it. During my time locked away in Waterdeep, I prepared a quite comprehensive speech for her on the subject of our former relationship and the manner in which it ended. Alas, recent events have rendered the majority of it moot, so I'm gonna have to improvise. Unless you have any words of wisdom to impart before I go. The summoning channel Mistra has provided is for me alone. No one else is permitted to enter it, no matter how talented a user of the weave they are. You'd make a fine three-dragon anti-player, you know? I think it's best I keep a cool head going into this. Approach it like a particularly high-risk round of three-dragon anti. I'll let Mistress show her flight, and then I can see how strong a chance we stand of winning the gambit. I'll only be gone for a matter of moments. The Outer Plains experience time quite differently to our own. Wait for me. Please. Waterdeep. You look well. As do you. But I assume we're not here solely to exchange compliments. So why am I here? You discovered what lies at the heart of the Absolute. The Crown of Causes. And you disobeyed my instruction. Why? Because you had no right to ask that of me. You cast me out. Remember? You were my lover, my chosen, yet still you know so little of me. The past cannot be undone with self-pity, nor can a future be forged. Only with the truth will you see the way ahead. The fragment of magic you tried to return to me was not of my creation. It was the Carsite Weave. It is a corrupted, half-born magic Wrought in the brief moment Cassus ascended to godhood. It hungers for power, just as he did, and it can never be sated. You unleashed something that would consume all magic in existence, and yet you thought only of preserving yourself. So that's what you're scared of. With the crown of Cassus reforged, I could take control of the Carsite Weave. You can no more control the Carsite Weave than a weather vane. <laughs> 
could control a storm. That it entered your body and consumed no more than your powers was a miracle. But we will not be granted another. The only reason the orb sleeps is because I have allowed it to feed on the true weave. A temporary measure, but one that will not be enough to save us. With each day that passes, the Elder Brain threatens to become a new kind of god. Its worshippers, a scourge of soulless illithids. If you will not use the orb to end this abomination, then you must find a way to separate crown and host. When you've done this, you must surrender the crown of Carsis to me. A great ask indeed. You've given me much to think on, as you always did. So be it. Follow the needle of your own wisdom. We shall see how truly it leads you. Carsite weave. I had no idea. Do you realize what this means? The orb is no stray piece of ordinary magic. It is something entirely different. The nascent form of a new divine power. Of course, I couldn't control it. I was mortal. But once I reforge the crown, the power of a god will be mine to command. The orb will answer to me. I knew it was powerful, of course, but I could hardly analyze something trapped within my own body. Let me assure you, Carsite Weave has no more inherent evil to it than a, a child in the womb, or an axe half forged on the blacksmith's anvil. It is a tool, ready to be shaped by its wielder, by me. And you know me to be someone of reasonably sound moral judgment, don't you? But they didn't. I always thought it was a miracle that I survived, but I'm starting to wonder if there was more to it. What if it chose me? I don't think you're quite seeing what I'm seeing. Think about it. The crown of Carsus, the Netherstones, the Carsite Weave. No more than a tadpole's breath from being reunited. This is my chance to get back everything that was taken from me. Everything Mistra denied me. And once I have it, I can forge a better world. Be a better god. I want you to help me. I thought you more ambitious than this. I see I was mistaken. Very well. I'll drop the matter. For now. Go ahead. I'm listening. I've often asked myself the same question never really found a satisfactory answer. You clearly see something in me that I can't. The wisdom and intelligence required to overcome almost insurmountable odds, perhaps? All the stupidity required to attempt it. I take it as a compliment either way. You don't get to be 13 centuries old without becoming a sound judge of character. And cheese, apparently. I regret many things in my life. Choosing to be here, intact and unexploded, is not one of them. For now, to have a few more days in your company, no, I wouldn't change a thing.
Mistra has forsaken Gale entirely. A crushing blow. But he is strong enough to persevere, I think. So, Gale's hedging his bets with Mistra? I can't say I blame him. Who'd want to hold a power like the Crown of Carthus in their hands just to hand it to someone else? I know what my decision would be, but we're all different, of course. Shield our people from the depredations. You see an altar dedicated to Mistra. Mistra, mother of... Even though you do not follow her, you feel her power resonating from the statue. Don't waste a step. One with the weave. Nothing hurts anymore. Uh, my legs. I can't feel them. Tell the others. This man is not long for this world. Take two. struggling lungs, his last ep At the ready. I shouldn't have wished to live in more interesting times. Perhaps. How considerate.
My faith protects me. Looks like a trap there. Nobody messes with the Stone Lord, Rattling. Nine Fingers sent her love, asshole. Your Stone Lord's a dead man walking. You, help me kill these asses. The guild will sprinkle you with gold. Too late, Cook. Nobody but us leaves this place alive.
Nothing will stand in my way. Well, so much for peace. Have to keep going. Good stranger. Someone who tried to slink away rather than get involved. They wouldn't earn the gratitude of the guild. A new flavor of scum that's been muscling in on our business. Agents of the Stone Lord. Nobody actually knows. Word is he's big, dense, tough as rocks, but human. We think, and definitely ruthless. We think the Stone Lord and his cronies are in league with the absolute cultists. This little operation here certainly suggests so. They were shifting something valuable by boat, but that something belongs to the Guild now. Of course! The Guild always rewards good work. Now scram!
Oh.